At the upper end of the emerging mirrorless camera scene is the crown of Sony's NEX line. It's the NEX 7. Priced at over $1,100 for the body alone at the time we're recording this, it's one of the most expensive mirrorless cameras you can buy. It's twice the price of its little brother, the excellent Sony NEX 5N. But is it really twice the performance? Can it be worth $1,200 when there's so many spectacular mirrorless cameras out there for hundreds less? Well, let's shoot it under real life conditions and take a close look at how well it works and how good the photos and video files are and how easy it is to use. And we'll discover who's going to be happy with this camera and who's going to be disappointed. I'm Will Crockett. I'm a pro photographer, owner and chief tech advisor of a few large photo websites, I've worked as a consultant to some huge companies in the photo industry, and I even get to report my latest photo fun facts to the great men and women who work in the Pentagon. And now I'm learning the next generation of cameras in my migration to mirrorless. The NEX7 is designed from the ground up to be a high-end, hybrid photo plus video camera. And it offers up a 24.3 megapixel sensor that's physically larger than most mirrorless camera sensors, but don't be fooled into thinking that sensor size alone is your guarantee of image quality because it's not. There are many cameras with large sensors that have, you know, marginal image quality, and there are other cameras with small sensors that have superb image quality. So the only way to judge image quality is by looking at image quality. That's right. File formats that pop out of this camera are JPEG, RAW, RAW plus JPEG for creating still photos, and for video, it's the spectacular AVCHD format or the QuickTime MP4 format that uses the H.264 codec that allows us to make great full 1080p and 1080i format video. There's also a very good internally stitched panoramic mode in both 2D and 3D that could use a little improvement, but it's very fun to play with. As for memory cards to hold all those wonderful photo and video images, you can use any of the common SD cards, and you can use the Sony Memory Stick Pro cards, but you can only use one card at a time. Now, in case you're wondering, we found no advantage in using the Memory Stick card over the typical SDHC cards that we use in all our cameras. So feel free to feed this camera any brand of SD card as long as it has a speed class of six or higher to make sure it captures all that HD video. Batteries in some mirrorless camera systems are a real nightmare, but not here. The NEX7's battery is small, lightweight, and fabulous. It'll power the camera through over 500 medium-sized JPEGs with autofocus, or check this out, it'll shoot over 110 minutes of recording full blast 1080 video. That's over 20 gigs of data before that battery needs a recharge. That's terrific. It's got a top of the line tilting rear display screen. Resolution is spectacular on this. It's also got a first rate built in electronic viewfinder that is really important for both pro and non-pro photographers. It's got an audio input jack, and it's got a hot shoe, which is good, but it's that goofy Sony style, which is not so good. So if you want to use a non-Sony flash, you're going to have to buy an inexpensive hot shoe adapter in order to trigger that flash or to trigger a pocket wizard. I've shot a little over 600 photos with this camera in the past three weeks, and the quality of both photo and videos has been excellent on all fronts. From deep, vivid color photos, to low-light indoor shots, 
to a big shoot with Pro Flash, this camera delivers pro level, full DSLR quality photos and video files, no mistake in that. And I'm very impressed with it too. Its internal image processing is kind of sci-fi like the way it handles things like dynamic range and intelligent contrast, things that lesser cameras would easily fail on. There's a lot going on inside this camera to produce premium quality images for you without you having to think about it. I like that. And just about all of it works well. Even the auto HDR features that my photo geek friends like to play around with. And you don't even realize all this background processing is going on inside until you see the results. One feature that does help out a ton that you're really gonna like on this is the image stabilization function. That's used to reduce the shaky images, of course, and in Sony's system, it comes from inside the lenses, not inside the camera body. But the lenses that I've used, all Sony, by the way, performed very well. Particularly the pricey and bulky, but really good, Sony 18 to 200 millimeter lens. Now, in the DSLR world, I've been a big critic of 18 to 200 millimeter lenses. I've never liked any of them, no matter what brand. But this brand, it's my buddy. Video image quality is even better than the photo quality, no kidding. I know I sound like I'm raving here, and I'll get to the bad stuff in a little bit here, but imagine a camera set in its full intelligent auto mode, then attaching the longest zoom lens that the company makes for that, then zooming it all the way out to its max, and hop into a high school gym and shoot your kid's high school graduation. You gotta handhold the camera, right? Because you can't use a tripod there, and you're sitting in the seat that they assign you in, and you, know, you can't stand up and block everybody else's view, and you're just hoping you're gonna get good shots. Well, look at this. Auto white balance, outstanding image stabilization. This is shot just from my seat. Now this is the original footage from this camera with zero post-processing. You're seeing exactly what came out of there. So my score for picture quality on this camera with the Sony lenses is a 9.6. That's really good. Low light imaging without using any flash, of course there's no flash in video, is one of the reasons you choose a mirrorless camera over a DSLR. These just work better in low light conditions than DSLRs do. Remember I said that I used this camera to shoot my son's graduation with? Mm-hmm. Well, just for fun, I shot a few photos at ISO 16,000. That's right, 16,000. And here's the original file from the camera in JPEG mode, no RAW. I shot it in auto white balance and aperture priority exposure mode, and I shot it from my seat without a tripod, too. This is superb. And for fun, I cropped it and I put a vignette on it to make the corners a little dark and I made a 20 by 24 inch print without any file adjustments, no magic noise filters and Photoshop hocus pocus, nothing. And you know what? I would be proud to hang this print on my wall, but I won't because it's not my kid. <laughs> <laughs> Performance on video on this camera is just as impressive. So for low light color, low light autofocus, and image quality under low light for photo and video, I give this a 9.9. .9. That's the highest rating I've ever given any mirrorless camera. The NEX7 looks to me like it wouldn't be a comfy camera to shoot, right? but it is comfy, and it's well-balanced. Other than feeling a little small in my great big hands like most mirrorless cameras do, I have no problems with its size, with its shape, and with its weight. The tactile feel, the way the buttons press, are an important feature for me, and on this camera, they're excellent. But the layout of the menu inside the camera, oh, it's so bad. So unfriendly, easy to get lost. I can't remember where stuff's at. It doesn't make any logical sense to me. So disappointing. The way I prevented the menu structure from ruining my day was using the sweet tri-nav, as Sony calls it, way to adjust the cameras. That's these two knobs up on top here in this dial. They allow you to change things like shutter speed and exposure compensation while you're shooting really well because they have a good feel to them without pulling the camera away from your face. Flash? 
Well, consider all mirrorless cameras as flashless cameras as best you can, and you'll be happy. Now, there is a pop-up flash on this camera, and it, <laughs> it will work if you're desperate, but the slide-in Sony flashes that you can buy really aren't a whole lot better, so skip those two. Listen, take advantage of this camera's phenomenal low light ability, or slide in an LED light into this camera and have a happy life without flash. I don't mind spending the extra bucks for something as long as it's worth it. That's where I get my definition of value. Is it worth the money or is it not worth the money? If you're to buy and use this camera to generate some extra income, then it's easily worth $2,000 for this camera and this lens in particular. You'll have a money-making device. But if you're a weekend shooter and you want to spend two grand on a mirrorless camera kit, I think you can easily find a better value for your money with a different brand of camera system. Now, this camera does offer crazy good performance, in fact, better than most people are ever going to need. And it's got a really nice built-in finder. I like it a ton. And of course, the hot shoe is going to help out for most folks a lot too. So if the price of admission for all those features is $1,200 for the body alone, I do think it's worth the money, but <laughs> just by a narrow margin. Who will be happy with this? I mean really happy with this, besides, you know, rich guys that just won the lottery. First group would be pro photographers looking for a second system for shooting photo plus video jobs. They'll love this camera. Or pro photographers or semi-pro photographers who want a powerful vacation camera will like it. Also, my photo geek friends are going to love this thing. They like all the latest technology and all the menu stuff. They'll be playing with it for hours. Also, people who need excellent indoor non-flash pictures or who shoot nighttime landscape pictures will appreciate this a whole lot. Who's going to be disappointed with this camera? Well, families. Yep. This is not the best choice if you want to buy one camera system for mom and dad and your adult through early teen kids to use. This is just too hard for most folks to flip through the various modes and to get inside the rather clunky menu design, really. For families, there are much better choices. Also, if you're a bargain hunter or you're a stickler for getting your money's worth or more than your money's worth, this isn't for you either. This is a pricey but great camera, but it ain't no bargain. <laughs> we have plenty more real life reviews of photo products for you on GeekBeat TV as well as PicturingHD.com. And of course, you can check out our Pictures That Move DVD if you'd like some tips on how to make your mirrorless camera your best friend.